Hello everybody, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a reaction today to warm myself up from the winter weather ramping up. It's going to be a little bit different, I'm not going to be responding to serious political theater. Uh, in my eyes, I've been trying to get a better sense of the real cultural issues uh, that plague society. And I really think that uh, conservative culture in the, in the United States specifically has a good handle on not only the kinds of issues that affect everyday people's lives, but affects everyone's lives to such a degree that to ignore these issues would be an extreme disservice to humanity as a whole. <clears throat> so that's why we're going to go ahead and react to the uh, conservative twins talking about the national anthem situation going on with the NBA right now. I'm sure they have some very insightful things to say. Um, be sure to like and subscribe since you support this effort, obviously. Or don't. Up to you. Got a new show for y'all. Got a damn good show. Yeah. But for start show, remember everybody, you can support the Hodge twins at officialhodgetwins.com. Pick you out a Patriot t-shirt. By the way, I know that their demeanor seems to be generally, like, goofy or unserious, but these motherfuckers are no joke. They got 1.76 million subscribers on YouTube, and that's not counting the fact that these motherfuckers are fucking huge on Facebook. Uh, at least I assume they are. I don't know if they've been to platform from there or not, but... Yeah, I mean, th th this, is, this is a no-joke situation here. Um, these guys are pulling a lot of eyeballs so theoretically that means that they've tapped into something that uh conservative culture in the united states uh, uh needs to hear or relies on got some beer products too use discount code circle back to give you 21 cent off you might check out those beard products yeah. anyway today's topic the nba <laughs> yeah i used to be a big fan growing up love basketball man play jv play boston yeah, that's about as far as it went. <laughs> Not because I wasn't talented. My I grades is too low. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did all. We that did. damn ADA, what's it called? Attention deficit disorder? Had limitations, man. <laughs> anyway, hey, um, the NBA. You okay. Used to be big time fan. Yeah. I used to, before I got into politics, I was actually a LeBron James fan. Yeah. But when I got into politics, I was like, man, this dude is stupid. He's a he's he's a he's a he's a loser. Actually, when he beat I wouldn't call him a loser. No, to me, he is he's a he's he's a loser. I mean, he's not a loser loser, but when he's comes, not a loser loser, he just he sees the world differently than we do. I actually cried when when you didn't cry. Shut up. Yeah, I did man. You cried for what? When when um Cleveland beat uh. Golden State cry. Warriors, man. That's a metaphor. Figure yeah, speech. Yeah, it's a metaphor. Telling. I wasn't crying and crying. And it's a figure speech like like kind of when Donald Trump said, fight like hell. It's figure speech. I mean, hang on. 30,000 likes. Almost 400,000 views. This video was uploaded yesterday. First 90 seconds. 10% of this video has been banter. It doesn't mean to fight like hell. It's a figure of speech. But yeah. anyway, it's a figure of speech, Lefty. The reason why we discuss the NBA because of Marcus. I, I, no one gives a fuck about... I don't know why he's saying Lefty. I'm still just hung up on the fact that they haven't said shit, and it's been almost two minutes. Cuban, but before I even jump to that, yeah. I, I gave up all hope for the NBA when, they, when, the, when the players didn't want the owners of the team to be called owners anymore. Yeah. They felt it was racist. They won't. Hang on. I don't remember. I'm not the biggest NBA fan. I like the NBA, but I'm not like a. I don't have like a favorite team or nothing like that. Um, but let's see this NBA players, owners, slavery. Is that that came up? Hang on. Twenty nineteen. Damn, referencing a story that's almost two years old. 
Draymond Green earns. You shouldn't say owner, Green said. Green added that owner should be called CEOs or majority shareholder or some other term because it was insensitive to say a white man owns the labor of black men. This is from Granite Grok. The story they reference is from Breitbart. <laughs> let's, keep, let's keep going down the rabbit hole here. NBA commissioner now says that the league has moved away from using the term owner because he's sensitive to the racial connotations that apply to the word. Okay, let's see if we can find, like, an AP article. That isn't so fucking owner. Okay, so hang on a sec. Uh, this this story here is about Mark Cuban, you know, being against the the national anthem being played, which I think is actually good. Um, sports should not be a space for nationalistic pride. That makes no sense to me. Um, but the NBA is making it a requirement. So. I wonder if that's going to be brought up here. But anyways, the NBA commissioner is acknowledging essentially that using the term owner can be seen as insensitive to a player base that is 80% black, uh, which is fair. And frankly, they aren't owners, right? Like, they own the team. But even then, like, that's yeah, kind of, right? When we're talking about, like, things that are publicly owned, usually, like, you know, where you can have, like, investment uh, shareholders and stuff like that. I understand that. I mean, really, at the end of the day, this is, like, semantics, right? It doesn't matter. You know, like, if you if you stop calling them owners, does it change the dynamic at all? The power relationship between the players and the majority shareholders? No. So, I guess I agree that it's not a... It's not... It doesn't really change anything. Um... But for that reason, I would say, who gives a shit if it, if the title is changed or how you refer to those specific people, the owners of clubs and owners of teams, changes. I mean, but wow, they're referencing a story from two years ago. I wanted the owners to be called governors. Yeah, like there's no such thing as a racist governor. I mean, he didn't say that. He said majority shareholder, but whatever. There's I mean, good governors, but there's also some bad governors. I mean, they are, they own the team. They own the coaches. I mean, they don't own you physically. Yeah. I mean, like, let's look at this. Slavery. The owners own the slaves. Yeah. You can't just walk in and say, Master, I quit. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Today, yeah. you could do that yeah. if you really want to. You could actually run away. And the owner's not going to stick a bunch of dogs on you. Yeah, they chase you down. He's going to sue your ass. Y'all just dealing with semantics. That's how. Well, okay, it, it is true that he's dealing with semantics. But, like, he said he's just going to sue your ass. Like, hang on. Isn't that kind of, like, the equivalent of, like, sicking a bunch of dogs on you, right? Like, if you're in a position to where you could potentially lose all your earnings or money or whatever. If you do try and, like, leave. Uh, like in violation of a contract or something like that. I mean, it's kind of the equivalent. It's not obviously it's not the same. I just find it funny that he's like, oh yeah, I know he'll just take everything you own, you know. Weak y'all are. You are a commodity. No way. I don't care how you twist it or look at it. It's just semantics. Yeah. I mean, ye yeah, labor is a commodity. This is a based Marxist take from the Hodge twins. Yeah. Make you feel better. You are a commodity. <laughs> Yes, the owner, a.k.a. governor, owns your ass. He yeah. owns the coaches. He yeah. owns the water bottles. He owns the jerseys. I mean, it's just a, he owns the building. Yeah, I mean, he owns it. I mean, like I said, if you run away, I'm sure he's going to be pissed, but he's not going to stick dogs on you like they did in the slave days. But anyway, Mark Cuban for this whole year. I mean, dude, we're, again, we're three minutes in here, and, like, they've spent more time, like, the, the, the political issue they've been discussing more – <laughs> so far, I know I'm, you know, nitpicking because obviously we're in the beginning of the first half of the video here, but 
is a, a story from two years ago. This is another example of priming. Yeah, you know, I've talked about it before in, in other videos where they're they're trying to set the tone here of the NBA is a bunch of liberal crazy people, right? Like that's what the tone is being set, so that the fucking sixty five year old retiree who just loves the fuck out of Trump has the hat, has the flag, has the shirt. You know what I mean? They got fucking Trump socks. They got the bumper sticker. They are fucking smashing that like button and sharing it to all of the friends in their golf club. You know what I'm saying? Before that third minute even hits the video. You know what I mean? Like, that's all it's for. It's just it's just drumming up the works. You know what I'm saying? It's trying to make you, you know, amped up, you know? It's trying to hype you. Yeah. Hasn't his team, it, before the games, has not been playing the national anthem. The most, I mean, this is, that's what brings... I mean, we should all be happy to hear that song because we live in the greatest country and this is the land of opportunity. Yeah. Greatest country at what? Land of opportunity at what? Honestly. Like, honestly, I'm sick and fucking tired of this myth being perpetuated nonstop. Look, Hodge Twins, I'm happy you're successful. You know what I mean? And me, I'm comfortable too, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, like... My level of comfort is probably not the same as theirs. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm one month being out of a job but being homeless. You know what I'm saying? They're not. And frankly, <laughs> what do what do we have to be proud of? You know, like our infrastructure is crumbling. We're not taking the climate crisis seriously. We have food insecurity that rivals third world nations in our country, especially for people that are poor and indigenous. The wealth gap is extremely wide. We don't even have health care. We don't even have like the like shitty, you know, public option, public like pri like in uh, health insurance health care. We have aggressive police. Higher education is almost unattainable unless you're willing to go into thousands and thousands of dollars worth of debt. What do we have to be proud of? How can you say we're the greatest country on the planet when we can't even take care of the poor? When a nation that has never been as wealthy as ours can't even build like a national railway system. Unlike countries like China that build railway systems in other nations, you know, and obviously they have their own economic incentives for trying to do like their Silk Road initiative and all that stuff. But like the, the point is, is like they have a productive capacity and they use it and expand it. And we, we don't we we always get rid of our productive capacity if it makes people a quick buck, people on top of quick buck. And frankly, we don't care if you starve, if that means someone up top gets to pad their wallet just a little bit fatter. There's millions of immigrants that's non-white trying to get here yeah. because of that. Yeah. But they haven't been playing the national anthem, and it was all because of Mark Cuban. Well, I just play us too, man. I don't know if he was. You think it was the players? They had to do something. I mean, I, he might have been virtue signaling, but, man, come on. Yeah, he, he can't be that. It had to be somebody else's. I idea. mean, haven't y'all ratings suffered enough? Y'all walk around last year with I can't breathe on your shirts. Yeah, keep going. Equality. Keep doing what you're doing. Y'all gonna turn the NBA into the to the old Negro leagues. It's yeah. gonna be black players <laughs> and black people in the crowd. Yeah, don't. They I mean, with all due respect, Hodge one and two. Um, eighty percent of the player base is black. If 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 that were to happen, <laughs> it would still be a successful venture. And frankly, you know, even though polling is often split when it comes to Black Lives Matter, it's usually hovering in that 50% margin. So, yeah, sure, half the white people will leave. We can even be charitable to them and say 60% of the white people will leave. It's still going to be a successful league, period. It's a national sport. 
It's an American sport. It's something that we do take pride in as a nation. Something that we spread throughout the world, by the way. That's something that we can be proud of culturally. But (laughs) the NBA is not going to be suffering because Mark Cuban doesn't like the national anthem. That's goofy. White people going to be there as the ones making money off of you. <laughs> y'all want the Negro Leagues back? I mean, y'all had Black Lives Matter on the court. I mean, what does y'all like? What does Black Lives Matter have to do with this? Lost a lot of fans that yeah. love this country, that love that gave you this opportunity yeah. to make millions of dollars. They're still making millions of dollars, Hodge 1 and 2. Yeah, you had in the game hundreds of thousands of white supremacists watching you and paying you money. There was a speaker speech I was being facetious. They're not really racist. You turn off a lot of white fans. And the way y'all going at it, you just... But, see, the fact that they... Like, this issue wasn't even about race. Right? Mark Cuban's like, hey, yo, uh... (laughs) National Anthem? Kind of lame. We're just gonna not use it. It's kind of kind of weird you know and they're just like well you guys are talking about black lives matter you're gonna have the all black league soon it's a weird thing like honestly i'd be curious to see what these guys' analytics are if it if it's if it if there's even like five percent people of color of any age demographic i would be fucking shocked this is pandering straight up that's why it's stream of consciousness ranting right you, you started priming them by talking about the radical SJW liberal NFL commissioners talking about owners shouldn't be called owners because that harkens back to the slave days. And then you – and they inaccurately kind of referred to the story too. You know, they, they generalized it, made it seem a lot worse than it is, and then they brought up the governor thing, which is not something that none of them said, right? They talked about making the majority shareholders or something like this. And then they moved into Mark Cuban is – against the national anthem and we need to take pride in this country and this is just like when you did blm and now you're turning off all these white people now we're on we're turning off white people and you're gonna have the all black league like this is just ranting bullshit you know and i cannot emphasize enough this has almost four hundred thousand views and it was uploaded yesterday on February 10th. Y'all trying to cancel yourself? <laughs> and the NBA stepped up. Uh, I guess the uh, the head owner of the NBA. <laughs> I don't know what y'all call him. What do y'all call him? He's the grand governor. The commissioner. <laughs> I think not the grand wizard. He's the grand governor. <laughs> right? He said, no. From now on, the Dallas Mavericks going to play the national anthem. See, I'm like hip to y'all's game now. Yeah. This was... A trick to win Take back some fans. Yeah, this, I think this was all planned. Here on the right, we think a lot of you on the left are like stupid. Yeah. But y- you think Mark Cuban's on the left? What? Just because he doesn't like the national anthem? Y'all ain't stupid. Y'all got this psycho, psychopathic, evil, yeah. evil, um, Genius, like, genius behind y'all. I know this was. They're funny. like Mega Man. We're gonna have this little pool. We're not gonna play the national anthem. Yeah. And then uh, the owner of the leagues are gonna come out and say, you know what? You know what? This is America. <laughs> We're gonna play the national anthem for every damn game. That's why right, I said it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised though if like the NFL commissioner does view this as a like a marketing like a, or some uh, like a PR nightmare. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. Because there are a lot of conservative uh, people that do watch sports, and uh, the NBA in particular, and especially the NFL and NASCAR. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's an, uh, an element. But hey, aren't these aren't these free market guys, right? Isn't that what you would you would want them to respond to market forces? And in this case, it would be consumers opting out of participating in a service or purchasing a service. Because they don't like the way uh, the operators of that service interact with the rest of the marketplace or interact with the the community, right? So, I mean, 
<laughs> fuck a national anthem. I, I don't give a f- I mean, don't, I, don't get me wrong. I can recite it because I'm an American, right? And they make us recite that shit pretty much from at least when I was a kid, you know. Um, So I could sing the song if you need me to kind of thing. But, I mean, <laughs> like, are these the same people that are like, your child doesn't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance? He must hate America. America good, everyone else bad, period. Yeah, Mark Cuban, if you don't like it, you can quit. <laughs> nah, they trying to win back fans. Nah, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work for me either. I ain't watching not one single game. Yeah, because I'm not going to support a league full of players that don't love this country. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to support a league where the owners are a bunch of woke activists yeah. that's actually divide. You're actually not bringing the country together. Yeah. You're actually dividing the country. Pay- so, look, don't get me wrong. I, I definitely resonate. And Joe Biden makes this argument about uniting the country, too. So, But I hear this shit from Republicans, especially now that they fucking lost, by the way. They lost. But... Yeah, I mean, um, I just, I don't really, I'm not convinced by this unite the country rhetoric, personally. Like, what do I gain from uniting with Hodge 1 and 2 here? Or Ben Shapiro, or Steven Crowder, or Michael Knowles, right? What What do I gain from this, right? You're just gonna have homophobic people, sexist people who only know how to make like the one or two gender based helicopter jokes that they that they've had since 2010. People who are reductive in their reasoning, you know, who are reactionary in their praxis. Th- these are people who don't take serious issues that affect others seriously because it doesn't affect them, right? They're sociopaths. I gain nothing from being their ally, from uniting with people like this and people like Ben Shapiro, right? People like fucking Steven Crowder. Glenn Beck, Ted Cruz. These people want to destroy what makes America strong, which the thing that's always made America fucking awesome is all of the different cultures here. And what's made the story of America so depressing is how the white supremacist state and this power structures, the power superstructures that exist within that state brutalize these populations within our country. Are you going to sit here and honestly tell me that these folks can contribute positively to the future of America? Anytime something tries to progress in any direction that benefits some kind of marginalized people, it's nothing but complaints, derision, divisiveness and prejudice they complain constantly about uniting can't happen but they're the ones so afraid to unite because at the end of the day i think hodge one and two are people i support their rights i want them to have a higher quality of life i want them to have health care right i want them to have you know i'm okay with them having their guns i see he's wearing a second amendment shirt you know Like, I want them to actually be free and not be under the boot of what the system constantly encourages over and over again and just spits out mindless drones or suicides because people are so alienated they can't handle it. But they don't want the same for me. Freedom is a vague platitude. It's not an ethos. I like freedom. I think it's pretty cool. But I just want freedom for all people in all situ or most situations. Obviously, I don't want you to have like the freedom to kill with impunity or any such nonsense. But like in your workplace, I want there to be more freedom, right? At home, I want there to be more freedom. You know, the decisions you make with your body, I want there to be more freedom because I'm not you. I don't know what's best for your body. I'm not going to sit here and act like I do. 
But they don't have that level of empathy and respect for their fellow countrymen. They just don't. So get the fuck out of here with this unity shit. I'm sick of it. It's just posturing. In the picture to a lot of black youth that watch your games for this country is racist. Yeah. I mean, the, the message, y'all, you think you're doing something good, but every road paved to hell has been from good intentions. And yeah. Your intentions may, might well, you know, might be good, but yeah. you're doing more harm than good. But you could, t- I could flip that shit right back around on these motherfuckers. You think you're doing good, living by God, living by country, right? But what do you do? You just crack at the armor that is America with every single divisive action you put forward. This kind of rhetoric serves nothing but, like, if anything, justifying reactionary movements and justifying reactionary thinking. And reactionary thinking isn't always violent or anything like that, but it does have a pathway to really extreme ideologies like fucking the Proud Boys and shit like that. I'm not watching your games. I'm sure a lot of people is not going to watch your games because you showed everybody how ignorant you are yeah. and unappreciative you are to this country. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't watch. I make sure nobody. Like, I got had family come over, right? Yeah. That's my um, my uh, father-in-law from my wife's side, right? They came over. They was watch. I came home from work, right? I walked in. He was watching NBA. I was like, "What? What is this? What are you watching?" He said, "I'm watching NBA." I said, "Cut that shit off." They ain't getting no ratings in this house. Yeah, watch that shit on your phone. <laughs> yeah, it kind of upset me that he was watching that in my house. <laughs> the only reason why I watched the Super Bowl is because Tom Brady. Because of Tom Brady. When he w- when he walked into the stadium with no mask, I said, "Man, I hope this guy wins." <laughs> yeah, he's he. And they're anti-mask. What? I mean, they look like a bunch. They look like they give a shit about their bodies. They look pretty healthy. Why would they be against wearing a mask? Like, wearing a mask is such a small thing. And I'm pretty sure that Tom Brady wasn't making a political statement. He's just like, he wakes up in the morning and he's like, football. And just forgot his mask. Happens to the best of us. He's, he's a Trump supporter, too. So I was pulling for him because he had a oh, yeah, he's Trump supporter. Hat yeah. in his locker. And I remember one game. I still think, like, he woke up in the morning and he was just like, football. Donald Trump met him one time, right? And Donald Trump was like, Tom, you're so good at football. You do such a good job with the football. How do you do that so far? And Tom Brady's like, yeah, I like football. And they were friends. And so we got a hat. It's a simple man. During the game, he called a play. Reagan. Reagan. <laughs> oh, three Reagan. And they ran the ball to the right. <laughs> I said, man, this is a this is a line right here. This is a true. Is that true? That's actually kind of hilarious if that's true. I want to see. Tom Brady Reagan play call. This is another story from two years ago. As for the current number one in the NFL, yeah, that distinction belongs to the Tampa Bay Bucks and seven-time Super Bowl champion quarterback Tom. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, here we go. From the eight. That's incredible. Reagan! Reagan! Is that Ronald Reagan? He called it Reagan. And he did run it. <laughs> I mean, it's center right, but... That that is actually kind of funny. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, damn, fucking maybe I underestimated Tom Brady. Maybe he knows more than one word. Football and Reagan. Interesting. American hero. I was pulling for him, and then the uh, quarterback for Kansas City. I forget his name. I should. What's his name? Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes. Yeah. He came in the, uh, in the stadium with his mask on. It looked like it was like painted to his face. It was so. It tight. looked like it was a part of his suit. <laughs> it all matched. He looked nice though, but that mask yeah. looked ridiculous. Yeah, the NBA y'all suck. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. 
they have a point about the drip. The drip was off with the mask. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not a very fashionable person, but an L's an L. I'm sure there's some good patriotic players in that yeah. league in that, but that just stay silent. I'm sure there's some good. I mean, I'm not saying that the other people that don't. Yeah, y'all are some horrible people. <laughs> but I'm sure there's some good coaches, players, leadership. I don't think so, man. You don't think so? I think they're all fools. Thank you, right now. <laughs> hey, don't believe this little trick. This little don't boy. fall for it. These guys are funny. <laughs> he's like, you know what? I'm sure there's some good people. <laughs> he's like, nah. And he's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is the level of discourse, man, that the right thrives on. And they eat this shit up, dude. 400,000 views. It is trying to grab some fans. Back. Yeah, China, I want, don't fall for it. That's just some. That's a liberal trick. I see some of their ratings. They get more views on uh, House Hunters. <laughs> no, there's two annoying. Tw yeah, okay, let's check on that actually. Uh, does House Hunters do better than NBA ratings? Okay, but House Hunters is an HDTV. Oh, this is. That's an old fucking article. Good God. Why is that showing up? Alright, you know what? Again, I don't want to hear the fucking Bing slander, okay? I get rewards points, alright? I'm pragmatic. We'll go to Google. Times like these, Google comes, comes handy. Alright, here we go. Cable ratings 2014. Okay, well, it was better. In 2014, but these are the playoffs. Okay, hang on. See, look at this video. Why is it that whenever they reference a story, it's just coming straight from the conservative blogosphere, right? Like it's coming from here. Let's look at this news break. Look at that. January 16th. I'm curious. You're tuning into. As we know, for a variety. Oh, man. I don't give a fuck. I'll look at this some other time. But you know what? That could very well be the case. But House Hunters is like the number one show on a channel. That's kind of me. That's like, I get it that like you like the NBA more. But people love House Hunters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, I could be like, you know, at, like as a video gamer, I could be, I could say something along the lines of like, yeah, you know, you, I, li I, I like how you think Cyberpunk's a good game, okay? That's cool that you like Cyberpunk, dude, but it doesn't even have as many downloads as Angry Birds. <laughs> so, can you even take it seriously? Yeah, Angry Birds is for casuals. But that shit's like one of the most downloaded games of all time. Because it's for casuals, <laughs> right? House Hunters is the same thing. You're appealing to the lowest common denominator. It's got a very simple premise that people can follow and relate to. Especially suburbanites. Go, uh, uh, compared to the NBA. And, and uh, I'm sure NBA playoffs will always outperform the House Hunters because, you know, that that's when the games are more high stakes. But, you know, we can have up to seven games in a series. It's kind of like with baseball. You can't expect people to have, like, super high ratings with baseball when there's so many games that are played, right? So it's just, again, this is just all poisoning the whale bullshit. And, again, we're not even talking shit. We haven't really established why Mark Cuban doing this is so bad. They just said, it's un-American, and everything else has been incoherent ranting against nonsense. Queens are selling houses. The property brothers? Yeah, they, people watching that. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say annoying. They're not annoying. They're just bland and dry. I'm just saying. You can't, anybody that hosts a show on that network, you got to be real dry. You can't be overbearing like us. They'd never have us on that. Yeah. I, so it won't be about the houses. It'll be about us. I, why did I say annoying? They're not annoying. I'm just hating. Yeah, you hating on them. I'm boys. just hating. You hating on them. I'm hating on that white privilege they got. <laughs> Are they white? 
Yeah, they look white to me. Yeah, they look white enough. <laughs> I mean, why would you think they're Mexican? Hey, you know what? <laughs> you know what? To black people, I'm black, if you didn't know. <laughs> to anybody that's just like fair skin, you could be from Colombia. You could be from, you could be, um, you could actually be a Latino. Or yeah. you could be a. You could actually be a Latino. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Ay, oh my god. <laughs> How are these guys so fucking popular? Like, <sighs> this hurts my head how stupid this is. But yeah, Cuban or whatever, well, Indian. To, yeah, but to black people, you white. Yeah, you just don't know it. <laughs> You's a white man. A yeah, white but uh, Mark Cuban. Not only are you hurting the NBA, I wouldn't be shocked if you hurting Shark Tank's ratings. Yeah. On that show, you actually talk with some, with some sense. Well, kind of. Canceling the, um, uh, the national anthem before How did he make his game. billions? He, he had a, some company, just how he made his billions. He, yeah. he had this company. An uh, internet company, right? Yeah, he sold it for billions of dollars. The company ended up going out of business two months later. <sighs> the, the business wasn't worth anything. Yeah. He's on TV, and he's grilling people on Shark Tank saying, how the hell is this company evaluated at two, three million when he sold a company <laughs> for billions of dollars yeah. that will was not worth anything. Yeah. Wait, is that? That's not true. I thought Mark Cuban's like fucking like a, like a, like a rich rich. Mark Cuban. Let's go with wealth. He's four billion dollars. He's sixty-two. He looks good for sixty-two. That's what happens when you're a billionaire, I guess. Broadcast.com. Okay, yeah, that shit went out. Of, that shit went out of business, didn't it? Is this still around? Oh, it's okay. It's discontinued. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that's because Yahoo is. Yeah, Yahoo bought it, but Yahoo is fucking stupid. Yeah, one of the worst internet acquisitions. Okay, right on. So he he benefited from the dot com bubble shit that was happening. He oh wait, he owns Magnolia Pictures. Didn't they make fucking like? Where is it? No. Yeah, Food Inc. Yeah, okay. This is not a small company. He's just some fucking... I don't know any of this, but... Alright, so, that, you know, that is actually a fair criticism, though. Like, they did... I mean, he did kind of benefit from the dot-com bubble bursting. <laughs> but I mean, also too. Again, he's the owner of the Mavericks, which has been a yeah. Like as it says here, has been a pretty good team. So, but I suppose that's fair. Only in America, in another country, you've been arrested for that. <laughs> that's not true. That was that's capitalism at its finest. Mm. If you of all people, dude, their only economic takes this entire show. Is that where they're criticizing corporations and how they operate within the like financial sphere and just now, like how you can sell a bullshit company, right? And and the company goes under and then you just are rich off of that. And then earlier when he's like, You are a commodity <laughs> like what's up with all the based opinions? Should be grateful for this country. Yeah. For you not to play the national anthem at your games. After you sold a company that was worth nothing for billions of dollars, and then was had the ability, the right to own an NBA team. Yeah, that's how he, that's how you got the money to own the Mavericks. Take that one deal away from him, he's nothing. You he's, can only. That's probably true. Do that in America. <laughs> do they not like America? Dude, th this is like a straight up a criticism of how like America operates. 
Yeah! Damn! That was a damn good show! Yeah! Don't forget, go to official horse twins. In interesting. These these are uh, economically incoherent conservatives, which is very common. I'm surprised they don't play the Chinese national anthem. When do we start sending the anti-Americans away? Where are we going to send them, Dracon Thirty One E? It sickens me how many people use the freedoms that this country offers to amass wealth and then, after acquiring that wealth, find it acceptable to demonize and belittle this country. Disgusting. You know, and what's funny about this again is that if this idea that you need to be loyal to the state was so deeply ingrained in American culture, I, I really doubt that America would even have been founded, right? The Declaration of Independence was specifically a rejection of crown loyalty because they felt like their representation wasn't being met uh, adequately, right? And so if people feel like they're not being properly represented by the state, it's their duty to rebel against it. That's how that 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 is American culture. To to think that it's anything else is absurd. <sighs> well, you know what? Either way, that was extremely enjoyable. Um, these guys are funny. I've got to say, uh, but completely nonsense. Just nonsensical. I, we learned nothing. I think we all lost 15 to 20 collective IQ points uh, from that. But hey, you know what? If you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment. If you have something to say, leave a like. And of course, I hope you have yourself an awesome rest of your day.